Gregsy in HD here, and I'm coming back to a fresh start. I've got a new intro, and I have a better motivation now to make videos for you lot. Now, I wasn't getting many views on my YouTube account, and I just came back on about three or four days ago and noticed my Photoshop video has got nearly a thousand views. It is on about 780, I believe. Um, yeah, once we hit the 1K mark, I will be very happy. But along with the, the nearly 1,000 views on one of my videos, I also got an email from uh, YouTube saying I could become a monetized partner, which isn't a full partner, but I am now earning money from my YouTube videos by placing ads around them. Now what I will ask you is if you see any ads on any of my videos, click them. Please click them and close them straight away. This is going to make me some money and it will help you in the long run because it will mean there'll be more videos, be more tutorials out for you lot. And I'm going to kick off the tutorials today with a Photoshop for dummies. And um, this is going to be episode one. And what I'm going to be making for you is a YouTube avatar like this. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it um, from your Photoshop at home. You can use CS3, 4 or 5. It does not matter. I'm actually using CS4 Portable, I need to download CS5 sometime soon, but for now we'll just use CS4 uh, Portable. So, what you want to do is open up Photoshop and press Ctrl and N at the same time, and that will bring up this box. You want to set the width to 200, you want to set your height to 200, and leave everything else as it is. Actually, no, you want to change the background content to... Um, what do you want it? Actually, no, just leave it at white, sorry. Just leave it at white. So, 200 width, 200 pixels, 200 pit. I'll try again. 200 pixels width, 200 pixels height. And then click OK. And you'll get this box here. You want to go over to your paint bucket tool and make sure it's black selected in the bottom left and click in the middle of your image. Once you've done that, you want to press Control Shift N. That'll create a new layer. You can name this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it border and what you want to do is go into the description of this video and there will be a brush download a brush pack download from metal cx and he is a very well known uh, graphic designer and a brush creator for photoshop once you've got those brushes um, you want to go to this little arrow up here load brushes and go to wherever you've saved them uh, you may need to extract them. If you don't know how, just give me a shout on YouTube. Um, so once you've got them here, you want to just... Um, I'm going to start off with this one that looks like Africa. And you want to just go around the edge of your video. Oh, uh, not the video, picture. You want to make sure you've got white selected and that you're on the layer border. You want to just go around the edge like you're making a border for your image and swap up between them to get a interesting effect out of them um, don't worry about the color at the minute because you will be changing that quite soon um, if I just get that looks a bit repetitive there there we go so once you're happy with that you want to press control shift n and I'm gonna name this one color and click OK now you want to go down to where your color is here where it says white you want to just choose any colour you want. I will recommend a quite a bright one. Um, I'm going to go with a pink colour for this tutorial. Now, before you start brushing around, where it says uh, colour, your layer over here, you want to drag that underneath border and just above background, where the little black bar is in between the two of them, and then just let go. And that will put it underneath the border, but not below the background. Now, what you want to do is start brushing about, like so and that will give your image a nice um, whatever colour you've chosen it will give it that sort of glow and I'll put that brush there just further up there we go and yeah something quite nice there um, sometimes what you can do is on the colour one you can press Control J and drag it up above border and where it says opacity here, you can change that down to about, let's say, 15 or 20. I'll go 15. And that just gives your picture a bit more vibrance. Um, so once you're happy with all that, what I recommend doing is click 
you colour top one and drag down to uh, the background and then down here where this little folder icon is here just click that and that will group them all and then you can just uh, oh no not sorry uh, you want to just click that little folder there then you want to come up here press uh, click that and then click shift down to your background now you can drag them all into group one hopefully no you can't what is wrong with it? Oh, you've got to drag them in one by one, sorry. Um, ah, that's why. Your background is locked. What you want to do is this little padlock here. You want to double-click that and click OK. Now you can drag it into Group 1. And you can rename that as Background. Right. Let's get on to the interesting bit. This is uh, going to be some realistic text. Um, in the description, there will also be a download link for this font, which is called XIROD. Um, so you want to select that, change the size up to about 24 and click in the middle and just type in any text you want and normally put Gregsy in because it's just I like to put my name in and you want to get it as close to the middle as you pi of your picture as you can now I know what you think it doesn't look very good at the minute you want to go over to your layers on the right here double click the Gregsy layer or whatever text you put in and down at the bottom here where it says stroke, you want to tick that and click on the stroke set and it will bring up these settings. You want to change your size to 1 and that just gives a little black outline to all of your text. Makes it stand out a bit more. Now what you want to do is go to where it says gradient overlay, tick that and click on it and get these settings up. You want to change your scale down to about uh, anything above 10 but below 20 or 30. I normally go for about 15. You want to um, say if you want your text to be purple, um, you double click this bit, the black here, and you'd make it a dark purple, like that sort of shade. And over here where it's white, you'd make that a light purple. Now what that does is just makes it look like it's reflecting and looks a bit more uh, 3D. Not 3D, but looks more realistic. And you can click OK and OK. Now, you want to just move that up towards the top and maybe even push it. No, you want to keep it in the middle, but you want to move it. No, keep it in the middle, sorry. Keep it in the middle. It looks a lot better in the middle. Um, a bit further down. There we go. Now you want to make another text layer by clicking the T button and clicking underneath. But now up here where you've got your text colour, you want to make that white. Click OK. And you just want to type in, um, what I like to type in is either a quote or my YouTube account name. So www.youtube.com forward slash Gregsy in HD. Now what you want to do is press Control A, change the size here where it says 24PT, you want to change that down to 12. And there'll be another link in the description for this other font, if I can get it up, up here somewhere. Oh, where's it at? There. Visit a TT2 BRK. You want to click that. Now the text will go quite small, but that is what you want and you just want to center it underneath your Gregsy text um, but in the middle and once you've done that you want to um, make sure you've got the youtube.com Gregsy and HC layer selected go down to where it's got this um, no where it says FX at the bottom you want to click that and you want to click stroke now same as before you want to change your size down to one pixel click OK and I think that's about it. Sometimes it looks a little bit re better if you move the text all to one side. Or sometimes it even looks good if you put it on the top. Um, but I prefer it underneath in the middle. Like so. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. Now, I hope you'll be uh, tuning in to more of my videos. But when you um, before I'm finished, sorry, I'm not actually quite finished yet. You want to go save for web and devices and make sure you select PNG24 and 
you don't want to click that. You just want PNG24, then click save. I'll save that as tutorial logo, replace. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you don't know how to change your YouTube avatar, you want to go to your YouTube account, which is here. And you want to go to where it says settings. No, you don't. Where is it? I have forgotten where it's at. No, you want to go up here where your YouTube channel name is. You want to click. No, you don't. You want to click settings. If mine will ever load. Which it won't. Because my internet has just died out. Sorry about that. Um. Try again. Mm, come on. Right, I'll be back in two seconds. I'll go and fix my internet. Right, I'm really, really sorry. I can't fix my internet at the minute. It will not come back up. But um, if you don't know how to change your YouTube avatar, it is quite simple. Um, you can search it on Google or inbox me. Leave a comment below even. And I'll reply to you as soon as possible. Um, so thanks for watching the video, uh, keep clicking the ads and closing the page straight away, give me some money. And if anybody's got any requests, I am taking uh, requests through PayPal, at 2 to £3 each, depending on what you want doing. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all probably in the next few days. I'll